Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Desmond Ritter versus Detroit. Tough one. We're breaking it down. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the video description. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. So first one here, Desmond Ritter, third and three. We're going to run Dragon Lion flat to the back. Catch, tackle, fourth down. Y'all. So when we get through this film, as we work through it, I think there's a lot of details lacking in some of this passing game. And so what I mean by that is this is a really common play in the league. So this idea being that we're going to run, essentially it's slant. That's supposed to be a slant. Double slant up here. That's the lion part. And then the dragon part down here is the back and the flat. And then when you have it with a tight end here, you sit him over the ball. Okay, that's kind of how it looks on a piece of paper. Now, the important thing here is this sit, okay, in man coverage. It's third and one. Man coverage. It would be really nice to get a pick here. So instead of just running to, like, win, like you, you're mad you're not getting the ball, you want touches, as opposed to doing your job, go get a rub on that guy. This is way too easy to let Thor kind of blow through here and make this tackle, make this play. Get a pick. He's right there. Eats avoiding him. You make him bubble, that's a first down. You run right at him, make him bubble over or under, it's a first down. I mean, that's not on Desmond Ritter. He's making the right read on what I would say is a, a pretty you know common play in the league. We're just not getting anything of the nuance of the details from eight here on the left. You don't run where he is. You run where he's going to be. So you would take this path again, man. I know I make jokes about coaching tight ends, but it would be a great job here. So make him, if he goes over or under, you're going to get a first down. The only time he's going to make this tackle is if he goes straight at the flat. I mean, it's, it's dialed up. Nine does everything he can here. Throw the flat. He runs right at him. Catch, tackle, punt. Damn. Next one here. This is a shame. This is a big post up top to eight, the new number one up top on the backside post play action. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm a huge fan of this scheme. It pops. It's open here. Desmond Ritter just throws a foul ball. He's got to move off the launch point. You know, no excuse is good enough to not give us a chance here. It's schemed open. That's a brutal miss. You know, <laughs> I'm chuckling because I, I don't know the Falcons personnel that well. and I don't really care enough to go look. But this sure looks like 23 personnel, two backs, and then three tight ends. One, two, three. And so eventually to essentially run, what do we do? A little motion here. To essentially do double post on the backside here. So we're just coming up. It's a hell of a post. To have that, have a tight end, have the capacity to run that route is special. Special, special. And we've got to give them a chance. The miss has to be an underthrow, in my opinion, and you got to give him a chance to go make a play, especially when he's that wide open. I mean, my goodness. Maybe that other guy up there is not a tight end. I don't know. 81. You know, it, it's one of those things for me where this is a throw you'd love to see Desmond Ritter make. Hit your back foot, shuffle over, reset, and give us a ball. I mean, he's winning by yards. That's a tight end? Damn. You know, I know everybody's like in their feelings about fantasy points and whatever with this cat. But leaving these kind of opportunities out there, man, what a missed opportunity. Next one here, third and seven, bottom of the screen, go ball. You know, essentially a jump ball. Give your guy a shot. Looks like he's got him by about six inches here. Just throw it up. Good things happen. No foul balls. Give your guy a shot. You know, they've got some big dudes on the perimeter. They're certainly going to have these sorts of opportunities all season. You know, 
you know, is that right where he's wearing it, right where he's trying to throw it? Only he knows. You know, the corner's not playing the ball. Certainly some hand fighting there as well. You know, I don't think he necessarily wins to the bottom. It's just saying, hey, we like the matchup. We've got the height. You know, and when he throws that thing, you know, I, I get it. He's just trying to give him a chance, and it's better than a long foul ball. That's for sure. I'm just not sure that's exactly where he wants to throw it. It's like a tweener. You know, he beat him like the ball should be over the top, but he kind of just throws it right at him. But again, if you're going to miss, that's where you want to miss with these guys. Give them a chance to make those plays. Go make those contested catches. Big play. Next one here, third and 16. This is a tough sack. You know, I'm not sure that there's anywhere he can go with the ball here down the field. I think maybe, you know, instead of retreating backwards, we could just get the ball to the check down a tick quicker. I thought Detroit does a pretty good job of moving 97 around. You know, he's going to cause havoc with one-on-ones. They find ways to get him on the interior with one-on-ones. Nothing really to go to. Again, it's just the 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 default to bail back here. Instead of this movement, just get it to the check down. And again, I get it. It's easy with a clicker and a marker. But right there, both check downs are wide ass open. Get a completion. Avoid the sack. Avoid the hit. Punt after a completion. Punting after a third down completion in the league is almost always okay. So there's nothing down the field. No one's saying throw the ball down the field. Get the ball to the check down faster. So now check down. And again, they're not going to get a first down, most likely. But instead of retreating backwards, sack, you know, mojo killer, change the field position, all bad. Just a little bit faster of a clock. You know, it's going to be really tough to get a third and forever first down here. Just no check down. Just that fast, as opposed to I think he occasionally drifts to trouble. Like he's he's not moving away from pressure here, right? Like if anything, he's moving to the pressure, which is a trait you never want to have as a quarterback. You know, if he was kicking to the left here to get away from Billy Jean, that'd be one thing. But instead, we're kind of moving to trouble, and we're running backwards, and we're getting sacked. Damn. Next one here, really like this one. Second and long, go empty three by two. We're going to hit the number three of the tight end up the pipe, middle of the field. We get some A and a first down. Love it. Drop back game, making sense. High low the mic. Really nice job of ripping this thing. Again, look when he lets this thing go. Separate right there. We can't see pitch yet, but we're throwing him into that middle field window. Got some anticipation. Protect yourself. Again, we'll be able to see the anticipation here. So the number three is just running, taking the middle of the field. Anticipate. There he separates. Again, you can see that area, right? So we're just high-lowing that middle linebacker type. So right here. From the number three up and right into this area. And again, you can see him, right? He's throwing it right there. We got the number two coming underneath here. So just a nice little high-low on that mic. And again, Everyone is going to try to attack the middle of the field open. Use your fast big guy to run in there. Throw it with anticipation. Hell yes. But one more time all the way through. You can just kind of see how this thing unfolds. One, two, three. Great base. Great anticipation. Big completion. First down. Outstanding. From the back. Really like the tempo and rhythm when he's decisive. Boom. Right up on him. Let's go. Next one here, really like the play design here. We're going to go from three by one to bunch three by one. 13 personnel, we're going to boot away and then throw the number two on like a sail on the backside. It's a really cool design. Now, the only thing I would like to see is instead of that being 81, that to be Pitts. Like to me, that's an easy choice there. Eight's got to be the guy. We can't have eight doing the runoff, but that's just me. But man, the design here, we're moving the launch point. Really nice job. Really cool design. So shift, three by one to three by one bunch. Essentially bunch, super wing. And when we come out here, when we do this kind of action, so we'll fake it. Quarterback, fake it, come out here, set up. Down the field here, we're going to get eight going through like the post here. And then we're going to get the number two running like a switch sail. So he lets Pitts go, then he runs out. It's pretty sweet. I mean, the design is awesome. The personnel choice is not for me. Regardless, it's a big chunk play. We're moving the launch point. A lot to like. It's a tough ask. 
for that pulling offensive lineman to block 97 in space. 97 in space now. He's a bit of a game wrecker. Uh, people are going to have to have a plan for him. It's really tough to be able to ask anybody to pop out and handle him in space like this, especially a center. Really nice job here. Design-wise, get the hook up. Nice play. For as much as I like the last design, I'm going to shake my head at this one. I don't understand what's going on here. Three by one, shift to three by one. And then what eight is doing down here to the bottom as the new number one? I'm not familiar with this route. And normally if someone runs the wrong route, you don't throw it to them. And you sure as hell don't throw it to them in a contested, bad leverage situation. What is Ritter doing? The decision? I have no idea. I'm sideways on this entire thing. It looks like, you know, is that a throwaway? And those guys can just jump? Is he trying to throw it to Pitts? I mean, we're missing it by yards. And I think it's even worse when you see the route from eight. Like, I don't understand. So, again, we're getting too cute with the shifts. Shift to shift here. And then just if we're going to, like, naked towards this or keeper towards this, I'm not familiar with this, like, chill, and then this. And then the DB type is under him when we decide to throw it. It just none of it makes sense. So this doesn't make sense. The decision to actually throw it doesn't make sense. It's just not good offensive football. There's nothing about this passing game right here that looks good. What is this? And again, I'm not saying guys aren't going to run the wrong route sometimes. Maybe it's the wrong route and I shouldn't be on the design. But don't throw it to him then. And if you're throwing it away, put it in the front row. It's brutal. It's just, it. it's disjointed offense. It doesn't look connected or people on the same page and bad decisions. Just rough. Next one here, third and nine. This one stings when you watch the film, man. It's one of those ones you just, yeah, stinks. So starting quads, get to three by one. We're going to throw a go up top. You like the matchup? I'm really not mad at the decision. I think good on you. But you've got to give your big guy a shot to make a play. You can't throw a foul ball. Cannot. So, I mean, you just, and you, you can say, hey, we're hand fighting. It's a penalty, you know, cry emoji, whatever. We, we got to give him a shot to make a play. You can't throw foul balls like this on third down. Cannot. And I think the part that really sucks is when you turn on the film to see the number three down here to the bottom, middle field closed man, you shouldn't have the corner, right? The number three to the bottom runs a corner. He pops wide ass open. So if you were to work, work down here, I mean, that's an easy hit. But again, I'm not mad at the matchup. You make that choice that you want that thing right there, good on you. But he's separated right here, right? Like, this is an... I, I just don't quite understand the miss radius more than anything else. This, to me, when you're behind the DB type, so the DB type is over you, this is an easy back shoulder read. You throw this thing right here. You throw this thing right here. Make sure it's a first down. Catch it. Get out of bounds. You can't throw a foul ball where we don't even get a chance to make a contested catch. It just, it's it's bizarre. And he's not throwing a back shoulder. It almost looks like Pitts thinks he's going to get a back shoulder, and then he throws like a, a high school fade. It's just so weird. Like, they're not on the same page so many different times in this passing game. And it's not like they're complicated things. They're fades and back shoulders. Like, it's just playing ball. It's reading body language and leverage. That's the part I think that's most concerning when it comes to some of these things. Like, that's a weird miss. Another example of just kind of disjointed offense and bad quarterback play here. We're going to, you know, these are the ones I never like seeing when you get a tight end or anybody hit like this. Those guys are vulnerable. They're getting hit in the strike zone. But, man, that hurts. And so we're faking on the wrong side. Either the back of the quarterback is wrong. We're exposing our tight end. I mean, that's a big boy hit, right? That's about as hard of a hit as you'll see in the league nowadays. He's exposed right into the ribs. It's like an ambulance shot. So, you know, it's hard to make sense of kind of all the bad that's going on here. So the first thing that just jumps off the film, and who knows who's wrong? It's one of these two. Somebody's wrong here. So we fake this way, but the back comes downhill this way. And yeah, that's a bummer. Then we're going to try to get this little pop pass here to the tight end. Well, this safety right here, is eyeballing him after the motion. So if you don't want the safety to be a part of it, keep it two by two. Once you get horizontal motion and you're going to fake this like jet sweep, 
Well, now he's peeking in here. Okay, so there's two ways you do you get away from that. You either don't do the motion, you just keep him over here, run him on a hitch for all we care, or you have to have the back side back here. This has to be a post to be able to keep him off. You can't have him running like outbreaking routes here, something to threaten the vertical of the safety. So if this safety does exactly what he does, stays flat here, these guys were crazy aggressive on the back end staying flat. You have to go over the top. So we've already missed one post opportunity. This time I would have loved to have seen the post called up top and thrown. But again, it's easy with a clicker. But you can see here, he's running an out, right? Like, I mean, look at the wide receiver up top. If he just runs a post. And I get it, that safety is breaking on the ball. But man, we can't get our guys hit like that. We can't get exposed like that. And you can see some potential deficiencies in the scheme around it. So we're all over the place. Can't get the fake right. We're exposing our eligibles. We're getting guys hit. Incompletions. It's rough. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for doing that. Again, the quarterback school Patreon community. Great way to support the channel and get even more quarterback school content. So hop over there, join, become a member. We also have quarterback school courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. The topics are RPOs, tempos, pass protections. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you over there. So hop over there. The link is in the video description and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available, also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Another rough one here, third and seven. We're going to get the wide receiver up top hit on an in, like an intermediate in from the safety on the opposite side. So this is, again, we're exposing our guys. We're getting our guys murdered out there. This is all bad. For me here, the his feet are all funky. It's not helped with the depth of these things. Like It just seems unsettled and not connected. So first off here, I think it's it's worth acknowledging it's this is kind of hard to do. So this to me is an intermediate in, like 12 yards. This is the safety that hits him from here on a three-step? Like that's a long way to go, right? So for me, there's something funky about the footwork here at the back. It's He's not in rhythm to throw this thing on time over there. Now it's also muddied because the number two here is not going fast. You know, this guy, not the fastest guy in the world in my opinion, but he gets through here and it's like, He's like chilling like he thinks he's going to get like a seam. You got to blow the top off that. You got to clear that thing. You got to flush it for the next cat. This is just, it's it's not good offense anywhere. But man, I hate seeing guys get hit like this and exposed. And you're letting essentially like the weak side rotation get you on an in to the number one on the opposite side. I just, again, you be the judge. Is the number two up top running hard? I mean, how, how far ahead is the in on him? Ian's got him by like four yards. He's got to like slow down so he doesn't lap him. And then the footwork from Ritter is one, two, three. Like, where's he looking? What's he, who's he looking off? And then we're like late, we go wider. We're just all over the place. I mean, we're, we're getting our guys smacked. That's a fast way to piss off some wide receivers in the NFL and tight ends is to get him hit like that. Again, what's he doing with his feet? There's no one to the right. Look at him lined up to the right. You don't have to hold the safety off. You got to get the, I mean, it's hitch, hitch. Man, that is brutal. And just for fun, let's watch the right guard here. Say it with me. Pass pro is not passive. Ha <laughs> ha. Man, hits all over the place. Another weird one for me. I think this is 22 personnel. For me here, the number one to the bottom should get the ball on this like big curl. I'm not sure why five is working outside. Maybe they only let them work outside. But this is one of those ones where you just want your guys to play football. This looks like they're like tight wound. I mean, it's <laughs> even if you're if you're five here. So again, we'll all show it from the wide. But if you're this wide receiver and you're running, we'll call it a curl. And your rule is you can get the ball here or you can work back out versus man, like a whippish thing. But there's this huge hole here. 
don't run to get covered is kind of a, one of the first rules about being out eligible at any level wide receiver running back tight end just just settle in here don't be a line on a whiteboard play football this to me is a pretty clean hey we got to play football i'm throwing this thing right there you need to get off your spot and catch it right here and go like don't not, i just and if, if those are the only rules that he's got to work back to get covered from thor we need better offense we need better scheme I mean, he eventually settles there, right? You see him eventually settle. They're just not on the same page. And again, we're asking our, I'm going to say, fullback type to hold up one-on-one on the edge. That's rough. It's a recipe for a disaster. I just, man, Desmond Ritter here, to me, you got to throw it to five. Right there. Right on his right shoulder. Brutal sack. Again, just watch this thing play out. He's the number one to the bottom. Hit the top of that thing. Just curl in. Play to space. Don't run to get covered. There's two guys outside of you. There's a super flat defender out there. What are we doing? Just no time clock. Can't hold up on the edge with the matchup. I just... This this is the type of stuff where you just kind of go like, man, what are we, what are we telling our quarterback here? How do we not see in that? How do we not have the freedom to make that play? It's a shame. This next one is a real bummer. This to me is they're playing this like uncovered down here to the slot. Like he's uncovered, so you're just going to catch it, put it on him. Well, if you do this and you have the freedom to do this, if he all of a sudden gets covered, you have to go back to the play. You have to play the play. This should absolutely be a turnover. This ball goes right through my guy's wickets. He almost catches out with his knees. How do you drop that ball? I guess you play defense. That's why you can't catch. Damn. That is brutal. So what am I talking about uncovered? I'm talking about most offenses have a rule that if you're uncovered, so if that that basically means there's no one kind of in the 10-ish yards, 8 to 10 yards, that you just kind of settle right off the ball or raise up and put it on you. It's actually easier under center to do it. You don't see it a lot in the league. But if this is the case, there's two things. One, they've made a huge mistake. You put it on him. Two, he's really not uncovered. So if someone's dropping here, you only need this to happen to you one time in practice or a game for you to learn. If this guy drops, just go back and play the play. So maybe you skip the number one read and go right to the number two. Maybe you say, F it, go scramble, get something yourself, fall forward. You can't just blindly throw it when the guy drops into your area. <laughs> I mean, it's not even close to being a good play. Like, catch it. He's standing there. Don't throw it. I mean, that's so lucky. Volleyball set, turnover worthy play, interceptable. <laughs> I think that's a word. But man, just don't do that, Desmond. Come on. Get lucky. Next one, third and five. This is a tough one. So to me, he just throws a sinker down here to the bottom on a little stop route. It's there. This is. Certainly NFL open, third medium, catch a one-on-one -on -one you like, run a stop route. You know, I personally think he had way too many misses in this game. Now I'm talking about why I think he might have so many misses in this game. But for me, this is just a simple stop route. You make it look like fade, you hit a certain depth, usually nine-ish yards, and you come right back down your stem. Okay, the ball can and should be probably thrown with a little bit of anticipation. So out the out your hand, on the way right to his face. You can't throw a sinker down in a way that even if he caught it, it probably wouldn't be a first down. Now, footwork-wise here for me is when you get to the top, especially if you're in like a shuffle here, just be lined up. Don't be closed so that when you go to throw, so now you go to throw here, you step eventually over here, everything opens to the left, the ball comes to the left, you throw a sinker off the edge of the plate. So, I mean, it's just... It's a combination of things. I don't think the timing of it is great, but man, give yourself a chance. Be lined up. See how he's not lined up there? You're just catching and shuffling. Put your right foot further to the right. Get yourself lined up. He eventually gets lined up right there, but now we're moving to the left, stepping to the left. Everything goes to the left. We're leaning. And I mean, even if he caught it, I'm not sure it's a first down there. So you can see here, this right there 
That's where he needs to be with his back foot, his back ankle at the top of his drop. Not that. So that, wasted movement, get lined up, someone steps on our foot, and we throw a sinker. Doesn't help to get your foot stepped on. Very next play, fourth and five, we're going to throw a hook up top to number five, the new number one, and there's just no separation. But that doesn't mean that we throw a ball two yards high either. So I'm not. we're not winning on the perimeter, but we're not coming anywhere close with some of these throws. These throws aren't, this is a nasty throw. Like that's a wide miss. He doesn't even touch it. <laughs> I mean, and again, I, the five here is a lot of things. Big target, but I don't think he's a guy that I would classify as like crazy wiggles. Like he's not going to separate here and like shock you vertically and then snap open like a Tyree kill. He's going to put like a move on it and it's going to be like laboring. And then you sky mail and you got no fucking chance. So it's just a, you know, way too many misses. I mean, sky mail. Got to at least give him a chance. And again, from the back, you can just see the rhythm of it. You see how he's like hitch, hitch, hitch. You got to know, hey, five is not the fastest guy. He's getting pressed. Take a big three, catch your rhythm, and throw a strike. Dang. Next one here, third and 14, down 17. We rip a dagger up top. This is my favorite throw of the game by far. Five hitch, let it go. A with the anticipation. This thing is sweet. This is an absolute laser. This is the stuff that like, if you can put this in a bottle, Desmond Ritter is going to be more than fine. It's, it's the splashes like this that make you think, oh yeah, we got this. Watch when he lets this thing go. Five step, hitch, he's throwing it. He's already separated. Look at the wide receiver up top. He's throwing an in to that guy. <laughs> just t take a take a snapshot here of just what we're dealing with. Here's the in that we're throwing. Look at all these bodies. Defender, defender, defender. Our own guy getting lapped, not running hard. Like that is a... Th it deserves it. I mean, capital A, let it rip, dog. That's impressive as hell. But we don't do this a lot. We certainly don't do it consistently. And it's a strike. Look at that throw. I mean, that is a straight up seed, y'all. That is rolling. Let it play full speed here. One, two, three, four, five. Hitch, throw. Great base, great rhythm, great anticipation, great accuracy. Put it in a bottle. Label it. Warranty. Love it. Boom. Right on him. Outstanding. Next one here, third and six. We're going to rip the slant. This is all slant to me with the back and the flat. Pretty similar to the first third down I showed. Again, if it was me, I would want Pitts to pick for the back. That's just me. Maybe they tell him to try to win the route. Right here, it's a really nice job from Desmond Ritter being efficient, effective, getting the ball out, looking like he knows, super decisive, catch one step, great base. Again, but you can see Pitts here, the tight end down here, the number two in the slot. Just get a rub for the back. You're not going to get the ball. There's nothing about that look right there says you're going to get the ball running an inside slant. There's too many guys in there. Get a rub for the back. But if you're not going to get a rub for the back, this is a great job. Catch, one step, great base, get it out on time, drive it, put it right up on his face. That's outstanding. It's a really nice job from Ritter. I just feel like they're, they're leaving yardage, easy completion, easy hookups out there by not doing little detailed things. And it's not like revolutionary. Set a pick on third down in the NFL. I mean, everybody can see it, right? I mean, the guy guarding the back is right there. He's staring at him, 55. Just run right through his shoulder accidentally on purpose. Help us out. Nice job, Ritter. Another example of just not being on the same page down here to the bottom. You know, this is looks like it's supposed to be a fade. Like we're just guessing high point back shoulder there. The corner jumps outside of him. This is an easy say no, get it down to the check down. These are not predetermined throws. You can have an idea what you're going to do pre-snap. Certainly want to have an idea. But once, I mean, I, this is pretty rare to see a guy jump outside, see the wide receiver essentially inside release, and then the quarterback throws it outside. In the, I mean, you, you can see what's going on. Just, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect all the time, but don't force it. 
and then come down. So if that's not there, one to two, just that simple, one to two, same side. It just looks so unsettled. It looks like we're not on the same page anywhere. This is not a hard thing to do. You could get most guys in like an all-star game setting, in like a college all-star game setting draft process. If the wide receiver does that, you're not throwing it to him. You, you don't have to be on the same page to see that the, these are easy C's. Just turn it down. You don't know where are you even throwing it. You're just guessing. Man, that's tough. Doing too much. We're doing too much because we're not doing anything really well. So get it down, eat right over the ball, find a completion. Next one here, this is about as bad of a rep as you'll see in the league. Now, it doesn't result in anything because our guy can't catch right off the chest. But, man, I have no idea what you're doing here. What you're looking at, what you're seeing, there's nothing there that says throw this ball. There really isn't. I mean, I, earlier we got a little lucky with an uncovered tipped ball. But this, this is the guy who makes the play on essentially what looks like essentially a, a glorified clear, like through here. But, like, maybe if this guy wasn't here, you would say, oh, I can just raise up and put it on him. But th he's standing right here. So he's going to push out. And then we're going to come down here and it hits him in the chest. Like it, it just, whatever we're doing is too much right now. So we got to, we got to peel it back a little bit, make it cleaner for us. I mean, what the fuck? Holy moly. Just take the easy completions. Help us out. Don't let us do stuff like this. We need some guardrails to, to protect us from ourselves. I mean, look at the lines. They're devastated. I'm not sure why the DB is jumping to catch it in his chest. Yeah, I don't coach DBs, but that's rough. Damn. Last one here. Brutal. Sack, fumble, turnover. 97 just wrecking this game at this point. The game's already over, but it's a great play from 97. You know, if anything here, pass pro wise, the back for me, you know, we got we gotta we gotta hang in there and give us some help. I'm not saying that it's an easy one on one matchup. It isn't. You know, I, I think in a perfect world, you'd love the center to turn to wherever 97 is if he can or go help. But the back's got to give us a presence too in the B gap. It's just, uh, you know, I don't know their pass pro rules. I can tell you if we're going to chip the end, okay, well, let's have some help on 97 wherever the hell he is. We got to have a plan because he's wrecking this game in the drop back world, in the pass pro world. And this is a hell of a play from him. But man, that's a rough day out there. So that is a wrap. Desmond Ritter, the Falcons, on the road, tough one. You know, I think probably at best, you could classify it as inconsistent. I thought on the positives, there were some flashes. Desmond Ritter showing off kind of the arm strength, a little bit of anticipation. But man, overall, bizarrely inconsistent. Not only in like how we're throwing it, seeing it, but like the miss radius continues to be wide, too wide, if I'm being honest. And how we're missing it and where those balls are going just aren't sustainable in my opinion. Now you couple that with some unique offense, some you know heavy-ish personnels and how we're going to get there. Things just look unsettled. And they look unsettled a lot. And so just trying to find that sweet spot for what it looks like. Throwing the ball, being more consistent. Because there are really are flashes. That long third and 14 where he rips that deep in dagger, that's a thing of beauty. That's a high level throw in the league. When he throws that ball to Pitts over the middle of the field, those are nice throws where we're attacking space. Now, we have to be able to do that consistently, and we essentially have to squash and eliminate a lot of the bad misses, the foul ball misses, where we're missing huge opportunities, not giving our big guys a chance to go be big guys. So we got to squash that stuff and kind of weed out the things that are really kind of hurting ourselves to give us a better chance to be more consistent throwing the ball. Either way, interesting film. Let me know what you thought. Let me know who you want to see next. I will see you next time. Have a good one.